All right, I had to do this for something else, and I figure why not just throw something together real quick to kind of put a template together for myself. I keep reading stuff or overhearing people speak, and they're saying stuff that is simply not true. So let's use math instead of opinions and actually look at how this stuff works. So one of the things I keep reading is the discrepancy between the indoor coils nominal capacity versus the outdoor units nominal capacity. And I know I got this background right now that's really annoying. And I picked that maybe because it'll keep your attention. Maybe it won't. I did a badass job of connecting the suction and liquid line to two pieces of equipment that obviously doesn't match, but it really doesn't matter because it's not the point of any of this. The point is to use math and manufacturers application data or extended performance data or whatever your manufacturer calls it to actually look at the capacity of the equipment. So the first thing I want to point out is we can have an outdoor unit that is large in comparison to our evaporator coil, which is small. And in the example I'm going to use in the next slide, which is this slide right here, and I don't know that I have a, let's see, that's an eraser, highlighter. Okay, uh, I don't like that color. And there you go. Uh, I have something on my screen. I hope it's on your screen right now that's highlighting it. But this was just a random selection that I did here. And what I'm looking at is two bars here. And it's this system right here and this system right here, which happens to be a three ton or an 036 outdoor unit. And they're showing it matched. And they, in this instance, happens to be HRI because that's where this equipment is listed. And the, the verbiage below explains how I just randomly picked an example from the HRI, AHRI website that shows a nominal three-ton outdoor unit. And in this pairing, it's matched to a nominal four-ton coil, which in my world, there's no such thing as a three-ton outdoor unit and a four-ton coil. There are two pieces of equipment that when they're put together, produce a capacity somewhere around three tons that you can see right there. So there it is, an 036 with an 048 producing 40, uh, 34,800 BTUs. That's at ARI conditions, which the real output of that with proper design conditions, which would be a 62 degree wet bulb or a indoor uh, set of conditions that would be 75 degrees of 50% relative humidity. This information that's published right here in front of you is at a higher outdoor, excuse me, higher indoor temperature, uh, 67 degree wet bulb. So it's 80 degrees at 50% relative humidity is the AHRI 210, 240 standard. But right below here, look at this coil that I just circled. It's an 030. It's a two and a half ton nominally sized coil, but I don't care what the nominal number is in here because it's irrelevant. Because if you go over here and you can look and see exactly the output. So if you look at a total BTU output, if you look at these in comparison, they're within a thousand or so BTUs at a specific airflow. But to say that you can't put a smaller coil in is inaccurate. If you're going to say you're matching a three to a four ton coil, there's no such thing. There's nominally sized pieces of equipment or individual components that make a system and the system has a specific rating. So what we're looking at right here is a means to compare a, one piece of equipment to another. We, we don't size anything based off the information that you see on the screen right here. And these are out of order. I'm not gonna go back and fix them, but this right here is just a, a little bit of a, a heads up, so to speak, as to what your airflow should be. 400 CFM per ton is the equivalent of beer can cold, right? It's sizing a system and arbitrarily saying that you're using 350 a ton because you live in a humid climate. That's beer can cold. Doing everything based on 400 CFM per ton is beer can cold. They're rules of thumb. And specifically what this says, and I'm not going to do a, a long version of it, but 
this is actually an excerpt, I think, out of Manual D, uh, and I could be wrong on that. It doesn't matter, but it, it's, I'm going to sum it up real well. You do a load calculation, and then you select your equipment as per Manual S. Manual S gives us guidance on what our airflow is supposed to be. Our airflow and our duct design is based off of sensible BTUs. If you do a load calc and you come out with a low sensible heat ratio, something that's approaching that 0.7, that would be a very wet house. Airflow in the three to four, uh, three to four hundred in the middle, three fifty target is advisable. Very rarely are you going to come out with a sensible heat ratio between 0 0.8 and 0 0.85 from your load calculation. That's when your target would be 400 CFM per ton. And it's C at CFM per ton. What we're talking about is specifically sensible capacity, not a total capacity figure, which gets spoken about all far too frequently. Bigger airflows like 450 or 500 CFM per ton is going to be appropriate in a typical or a better than average house. A house that is tight is going to have a much smaller latent load. Okay. What we have in front of us is a piece of manufacturer's extended performance data. You might call it application data. Um, there's several names for it, but this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. It's showing a nominally sized three ton outdoor unit and a nominally sized four ton evaporator coil. And I keep saying nominally sized because that's what it is, it's not the actual size. The actual size of this combo of indoor and outdoor section, if we were to run it at 1,000 CFM, and it's not out of the question to be running a three-ton piece of equipment at 1,000 CFM if we have a house that needs that, and a house that would need that would be a house that is leaky and has a, a sensible heat ratio uh, below 0.8. The column that we use is 75 degrees with a 62 degree wet bulb, right? That gives us 75 degrees of 50% relative humidity in our house. And then over here, we can see total capacity and sensible capacity. Well, I really don't care about entering air temps over here at 55, but let's just, for explanation purposes, say it's 85, um, uh, 95 outside. Then this column right here lines up right here, the total capacity of this 036 system at our design conditions is 32,500 BTUs. Our sensible capacity would be 24,300 and the remainder, right, the 20, uh, 24,300 subtracted from the 32,500 would be our latent capacity at that airflow. If we go up to the 1200 CFM, line we see our sensible capacity increases slightly and our our total capacity has increased here and our sensible capacity has increased here up here under these columns again the bigger airflow at 75 degrees 50 percent relative humidity we gained another 500 btus or so for our total and our sensible capacity if you were to calculate your latent from this chart, you would see the highest latent capacity. Excuse me, I said that backwards. You would see the smallest latent capacity at the highest airflow. And every time we step down in airflow, we will see our total drop. We will see our sensible drop. And we would see our latent increase as we move to the left and slowed it down. That's how an air conditioner works. More air across the evaporator coil, the higher your sensible heat ratio. The slower the air, the lower the sensible heat ratio. So what I really want people to understand is you can't say a specific piece of equipment or combo of equipment or pieces, something's going to happen just solely based off of your coil choice because it's not true. And this chart right here shows it. If you want to start talking about what happens with a piece of equipment, you have to include the indoor and outdoor section. And in addition to that, how much air is moving across the coil, because it all plays a part in how an air conditioner functions. I think there will be a time where I'm going to go through this more slowly and uh, 
fix any errors or stutters or whatever, but I'm not doing it tonight. Uh, this is a real good way to try and get my point across, I think. So if you have any questions, uh, ask.